Abraham had had this discussion with God. If you find ten righteous people, and it says he goes home and the Lord leaves him, and can't you imagine Abraham praying all the night, knowing that he has friends there, knowing that he has family there, I feel like he is praying, praying all night. When's the last time you've prayed all night for your family? Prayed all night for your friends? Or prayed all night for your country? And it says Abraham, who could not sleep, rose up early in the morning. And he went to the place where he talk, had talked with God. And from that vantage point, he could see the valley of Jordan. And probably as he looked off, he could see the outline of the city of Sodom. And probably the outline over here of the city of Gomorrah. And he prayed with great trepidation. He prayed with great fear. He prayed that God could find ten righteous people. And as the sun topped the mountains and raced across the floor of the valley, the heavens opened up and he saw a fire of cataclysmic proportion as the whole valley was just burnt with fire and brimstone. I'm sure it had to be such an incredible thing to see, probably like watching a nuclear weapon go off, a nuclear bomb. Probably he felt the shock waves as it traveled across the valley and even slapped him. The destruction, the cataclysmic destruction that we see. And I don't know about you, but I think I probably, if I were him, would have just been shocked to the point to where you just stay there and watch. And an hour passes, and, and then maybe two. And somewhere in his peripheral vision, somewhere he sees some movement, and he thinks, could anything have lived through that? And because of the undulation of the land, he would see a movement and he, he thought it looks like maybe some people have lived through it and then they disappear. And he's still looking around at the smoke and everything that's coming up. And they're coming his way. And as they get closer, there is a, a flicker of, of recognition and his heart, his heart just bounds it because he thinks, is it possible? Is it possible? And then the next time they come across a hill, he basically jumps up with joy. And he said, there's no way. But he starts running toward the three figures that he sees. And the closer he gets, he understands that one of them is his nephew Lot, who had been saved from the conflagration. People, if you read the Scripture, it says this, And God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the conflagration. Lot was saved because of the prayers of Abraham. And that's why you need to never quit praying. Never quit praying for your family. Never quit praying for your friends. Never quit praying for this country. And never quit praying for this world. For God so loved the world. And so you pray for whoever you can. You pray incessantly. You pray fervently for whoever you can. The good book says in James 5, For the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth not. And you may never know you may never know who God has sent out of the fire because of your prayer.